Thank you, Whitney. Welcome, everybody. Um, I wanted to provide a little bit of context. Again, as Whitney said, my name is Matt Shanahan. As the Chief Strategy Officer at Lockstep, I host roundtable discussions with our customers, really listening to what they're saying about the current environment. One discussion that we dove into earlier this year that's been pretty interesting is all about digital transformation using email for bill presentment and also self-service access for customers. Um, there was a common feeling when we were going through this that accounts receivable departments, while they want to drive you know, digital adoption, quite frankly, aren't sure how to do it. It's new. It's something they haven't had to deal with in the past. So in response, you know, I spearheaded an initiative inside our organization to work collaboratively with our customers and develop new solutions and services to break through this digital transformation. Um, and so really focused on it with a goal of adoption. How do customers adopt and go online? So today we're gonna to be sharing some of those learnings. Uh, as background, uh, Anytime Collect is a product from Lockstep. It's an accounts receivable automation solution. Uh, Anytime Collect makes collecting cash faster and easier, and it also makes your bank balance bigger. As you can see, these are the components of our solution. It's all cloud-based. Um, we do automated customer communications around the aging of the invoices. We provide a customer self-service to you know, access information, pay, pay invoices, a collections activity management to really do the task management for the team, and then, of course, forecasting and reporting. We serve some great brands. We have over 180 customers. Um, those companies, those 180 companies globally, invoice more than 3 million of their customers. We're the leaders in ERP integration. We've got you covered on a lot of these. Um, if you don't see an integration up there and you'd like to, please ask us. We're always creating new ones. So let's jump into our topic today. You know, a recent Deloitte survey reported that a large majority of CFOs have said the number one most important thing that they're doing right now is managing cash and liquidity. Um, it's obviously being driven by the pandemic. Um, and because cash, you know, the cheapest cash really comes from customers rather than financial institutions getting a loan or, or getting some equity that way, Streamlining collections have become a big priority for CFOs. But the pandemic has exposed cash traps um, in accounts receivable. And accounts receivable cash trap is something that creates, you know, or kind of creates a gap in time or delays the cash inflows. So that's what we call a cash trap. Um, and it's, the pandemic, as I mentioned, has exposed a lot of these. If you look at the state of accounts receivable, um, it's obvious that one of those cash traps is paper. You know, 37% globally of invoices are actually sent on paper. One analyst I spoke with last week uh, said the U.S. is actually closer to 50% paper-based invoicing. You know, other cash traps are less obvious, um, and it, they didn't get uncovered until the pandemic hit. So one ex example is the use of personal inboxes for collections. So eliminating these cash traps has really become the priority, right, of this digital transformation. And, and digital transformation is the means by which to get that done. As I mentioned, digital transformation should focus on eliminating cash traps. And the three specific ones, the biggest cash traps that exist, and this is kind of our work with customers that found this out, are paper, personal inboxes, and attachments. So what we'll do is we'll explore each of these and show how you can eliminate those and what the impact is to the business. So let's first talk about paper. You know, it's hard to believe that so much paper is still used in AR and AP. As I mentioned, almost 40% of all invoices are paper. And it's hard to believe because, you know, who really wants paper? It's expensive. Who wants to spend money on paper, filing cabinets, envelopes, ink, paper, postage and storage, it's slow. It adds days or weeks to the invoicing and payment workflow. You know, in our sessions, when we're talking in roundtables, uh, one of our customers indicated that it's adding uh, 10, day, 10 business days because of the shortage of postal workers in their area. Let's face it, it's more work. Opening envelopes, finding the right folder, filing in a cabinet, that's all additional work. Uh, you can't have paper and be remote. It's an office anchor, right? So when everyone isn't under the same roof, you can't hand documents off to each other, you can't get them. 
Um, again, one of our uh, recent uh, customers was talking about the fact that they can't, the home printers don't print fast enough, right? And they're running out of ink. So just getting the invoices issued is hard because the printers at home aren't fast enough. And it's hard to automate, um, you know, it's expensive to automate paper. And finally, you know, if you issue a paper invoice, you're probably going to get a paper check, which is cash trap, right? So it's a very slow process to do that. And I just want to kind of share one of the stories uh, that we experienced in working with our customers. Uh, one company had on a monthly basis what they called a folding party. Um, 18 people would get together once a month um, and, you know, basically fold and stuff, you know, thousands of uh, paper statements that they send out. And they would get those sent out and then come back. And that's the kind of thing that when you when you look at the total cost of that, that was we we roughly gauged it was about one hundred forty thousand dollars a year in cost, um, including you know the paper, the um, the time that the employees were working, all of that, just to be able to drive the collections process. So it's expensive. Quick question, our first poll question is just you know what percentage of your invoices are sent as paper? Encourage everyone to participate. It's interesting. We have a, a mix, you know, kind of across the board. Um, you know, some at 20% are sort of zero to 10%. Um, the uh, 10 to 20% is uh, 40%. 20 to 40 is 20%. So, and then more than 40 is uh, 20%. So there's a broad range of individuals uh, that are doing, you know, kind of sent, still sending papers. So you can see roughly that those uh, statistics are right. Thank you for participating. So what's the secret to eliminating paper? Uh, getting the right email address is really the secret. AP departments have defined service level agreements that they need to you know, meet in order to support their controller and CFO. So customers are really conscious about being responsive as an accounts payable department. So if you have the right departmental address, you'll have a very reliable invoicing process. And that's probably the most critical thing to eliminating paper is just, do you have the email address of the accounts payable department? And the email address is, is important because it's universally unique. It's an identity that, of an accounting department. No one else in the world will have the same email address as that accounting department. So it becomes useful also not only just to connect with them, but also to cleanse your own data. You might have two customer records that have the same e email address. And so you can clean up your own data with that. Email addresses also let you communicate with any company on the globe. I think Every one of us would probably be shocked if we were told that a company that we were doing business with didn't have an email address. Um, and an email address allows you to automate communications and trigger workflows, right? So it saves you from manual effort and all you need is an email to use automation. But here's the rub. Do you have all your customers' AP department emails? You may have been in business for 20 to 30 years many of your processes are probably based on physical paper. Momentum has kind of kept it that way, right? So when we engage companies in creating kind of online access, so doing this digital transformation for them, there's anywhere from 30 to 70% of the customer records that are either without an email or a wrong email address, such as, you know, the email address of the buyer rather than the AP department. That's a real challenge for you know, both for going paperless and for driving automation. So the question becomes, how do you get those email addresses? Do you call each customer or, you know, and get their email address? That takes time, right? And it's effort. Most accounting departments just are already overloaded with pandemic impact. So what do you do to go digital? That was one of the first best practices we identified. Um, and it was real interesting. Again, we, we found this in collaboration with our customers is to harvest email addresses through an online registration. So, you know, using a simple form, let, you know, customer come in and put in their account number 
and then be able to record an email address. And you can harvest this. And the way you can harvest it is maybe even just including announcements in your statements, right? To, to say, hey, go to this URL and register for online access. So that's a, a big um, key step is being able to harvest the emails you know, systematically and allow customers to do it for themselves. Once you've harvested emails or even the emails that you might already have, email addresses that you already have, what you want to do is validate those email addresses and other critical information. So this ensures you're connecting with the departmental email address, not a personal inbox. Uh, so you can send an email with a link to your customer and allow them to view their profile and make any updates online. And so that becomes this way of cleansing your data and ensuring that you have a trusted connection with your customer uh, to be able to process your invoices. So once you, you know, sort of step one is eliminate paper by getting to, you know, digital email delivery. The second one is really around your own team um, in eliminating what are, you know, what most people do is using personal inboxes. So emails represents a large and growing part of collaboration between vendors and customers. So as people move to remote work, that's where the pandemic started to expose these personal inboxes as a cash trap. So here's the way most accounting departments work. There will tend to be uh, either for accounts receivable or accounts payable, but in this case, let's talk about accounts receivable. There will be a, a shared email inbox or a distribution list that'll read something like ar at company.com. Any of the emails that come into that very quickly get pulled into personal inboxes. So the staff of the accounts receivable department will maybe pull it in you know, to Scott or Charlie or Julie or Bailey will take over and they'll start working on, you know, whether it's a dispute, whether they're working on, you know, some other things, they'll start working on those items in their personal inboxes. Now, we did a survey uh, before starting um, Lockstep around this issue. We surveyed almost a thousand companies and we found that really over 90% of companies, it's actually 92% of the companies survey run their accounting departments this way. So this is the best practice that most people have. Now, compare that to like a support organization. They would never run their things this way. Um, also, if you look at sales and other customer facing roles, they don't use personal inboxes as a way to manage the customer relationship. And that's because, you know, in the case of accounting, personal inboxes are really cash traps. You know, once a response is sent from personal inbox, the conversation is going to get sucked into that information black hole. You know, if the person is out of the office or busy on another, you know, activity, the conversation is going to stall. Uh, it's not visible to others on the team. And so suddenly it becomes a bottleneck. And of course, because there are multiple personal inboxes, there becomes more potentials for bottlenecks. And, you know, what if somebody leaves the company or is on vacation? You know, requests and communication to that email address, you know, simply, you know, create cracks, which then customer communication can fall into. So all of this leads to a reactive environment in dealing with escalations. And that's why personal inboxes are such a challenge and really create, you know, cash flow problems. So as we mentioned, the pandemic has exposed personal inboxes as cash traps. If we dig a little deeper on this, why, you know, what are some of the other issues? Most organizations are using Outlook and Excel or Gmail and Sheets, you know, as their technology stack for accounting. That means that there's no integration, which means that data is constantly being transcribed between emails and the ERP. There's no automation. It means that follow-ups and promise tracking and dispute resolution is all manual. There's no activity management, so you don't have visibility into what got done today. And it's really hard to control. So these are kind of the, the, the big challenges of being able to solve the cash trap problem is using Outlook or Gmail. So we're gonna do another quick poll question just to see what people are using. Sometimes we have our customers on here, so that's why we put anytime collect. You know, please do join in the conversation. Let a couple more votes come in. 
So far, we're 100% Outlook and Gmail. Okay. Well, great. Thanks for thanks for contributing. Um, as I mentioned, actually, in this case, 100% uh, came in as Outlook or Gmail. We have seen in certain situations people using things like support software to uh, replace that. So that's a bit of a square peg in a round hole. And so the answer to you know this personal inbox is to replace it with a shared workspace. Uh, you know, I'm using the example of Anytime Collect, but you know, this is where we're helping customers set up and have you know a shared workspace for the collections team. There's activity management to do assignments, uh, to be able to look at how much got done today, prioritize tasks, not to have to manage them individually. There's automation to you know make certain activities faster and easier, and certainly reporting so visibility on what's what's taking place and the goals for success. So that's you know kind of a key step is to really get off of a personal inbox and into a shared workspace that can be used by the team. The final one that I'll talk about, and it's a little interesting. We're going to come at it from a, an angle of you know the use of portals today, but really to eliminate attachments. So once you stop sending paper and you get rid of personal inboxes, the question is how do you get your customers online? So the objective is to get them to use self-service to process the invoices and pay rather than calling you or emailing. So traditionally, portals are the approach for doing this. Uh, but portals have a long history of failure, right? As you can see here, only 12% of invoices are received online through a portal, right? As compared to, you know, 88% through other means. And they've been around for a while. So why did they fail? Like, let's look at that and say, you know, how, how would you sort of overcome it? Well, low adoption is the single largest factor. Uh, customers, <laughs> portal fails. Uh, you decide to go digital, but your customer doesn't participate. So you're not going to get the business benefit out of it. Uh, a big part of that low adoption is really if you're requiring them to have a password. Because nobody wants another password to remember. They don't want to track it, all of those kinds of things. It's just another place to go. Another reason is the onboarding experience. You know, if it's onerous, you know, if it requires them to call you or, you know, you require too much information, it's just going to, again, you know, stop them from doing it, which then leads to the low adoption. Uh, support overhead is another one. If it's not easy to use, uh, if it's not intuitive, if it doesn't, you know, make it real simple to get a task done, they will either call you and that will create problems or they'll just stop using it. And the final one is really lack of value. What's in it for them? Why, is, why does this help them do their job? And why is it a you know, good experience? So you've got to be able to make that value really clear. And that's where attachments you know, come into the self, solving the self-service problem. If the, if the problem gets solved such that it benefits both the vendor and the customer, so both parties get benefit, then you're going to see a higher adoption rate. And what we've noticed is attachments are really cash traps for both accounts receivable and accounts payable for both the vendor and the customer. And let me give you just one example. Uh, you know, customer onboarding is a good example. Right now, what most organizations do is accounts receivable will send a PDF form to a new customer and say, please fill this out and send us all the information about yourself. Um, with that form, they'll also send another form, which is information about the accounts receivable department, you know, things like W9, et cetera. So then the AP department has to fill this form out, attach associated documentation, such as a tax exemption certificate, and then send it back. So both parties now have to hand enter information into their accounting system. So they're sending PDFs back and forth, represents the, back to that manual transcription of data, kind of just a overhead. And this is true for invoices, presentment, disputes, anything. So replacing attachments uh, with magic link access is a much easier approach. So what, is, what does that mean? Um, what if the PDF attachment could actually be replaced with an online form that also had automation in it? Automation to update the accounting system, automation maybe to notify you of changes. So it's a lot smarter than a PDF, right? And it was always up to date and always available. 
that benefits both sides. It's a way to break through the self-service adoption barrier by leveraging the ubiqu ubiquitous nature of email and the convenience of a magic link. Emails are powerful because they don't force change on the customer. Your customers are already monitoring and responding to their inbox. Right? So the AT inbox is being monitored. Magic Links, a newer technology, allows them to gain access to their, that content rather than a PDF content online. And the Magic Links are really secure. They're like a one-time password for use. So it's a secure hyperlink inside the email that lets your customer access information without a password. And by adding convenience features such as automated entry or automated notification, it drives up adoption. So those are the kind of, when we talked about the three things that were needed, those, you know, essentially getting email addresses, eliminating paper, replacing personal inboxes with a shared workspace, and replacing attachments with, you know, magic links and online access are the keys to digital transformation. But adoption is critical to set success, right, of this digital transformation. And so what is adoption? Well, adoption can be measured as what percentage of your customers engage digitally, right? Are they using these channels? Does it become their preferred channel? You know, and what's the frequency by which they use that? Because ultimately, if those happen, several things are going to happen. One, you're going to reduce your DSOs, your day sales outstanding. You're going to collect your cash faster. Typically, you're going to increase customer satisfaction because you're easier to do business with and you're gonna reduce your own workload. So there's a lot of advantage to being able to drive this digital transformation. We worked with our customers. So how does adoption happen? We worked with our customers to come up with a roadmap for that. Um, so putting in a program that allows them to look at who, who are the stakeholders for this? Who else, the CFO, maybe it's actually sales and account management also um, get hit by this. Reviewing some of the baseline, you know, of the statistics, where are you today in terms of adoption? Then looking at what are the, the business drivers? How do you align on what the success criteria are for adoption? As we talked about launching a, an email harvest campaign, uh, modifying email templates to go online, allow, you know, sort of launching this by training account, you know, accounting staff and stakeholders, and also launching a promo campaign Ultimately, what you want to be able to do is monitor the adoption, be able to survey customers and get feedback and adjust based on the data that you see. So here are some of the baseline metrics that people might look at. Eliminating the cost of paper. We talked about the one company that had a you know, $140,000 cost of paper. Deflecting inbound inquiries, accelerating. These are all potential ways that you would say, this is our success metric that we're looking for. As I mentioned, you know, harvesting email addresses, you can also do a direct mailer. This has turned out to be pretty effective as well. Send a, a direct mail that is specifically on this topic so that people will convert. Um, in the case of one company, they were able to do this uh, and the initial conversion rate was over 40% of registration. And then they did statement inserts after that and slowly kind of built things up. So there's a way to really drive this activity. Onboarding digitally. Here's an example of a screenshot. Um, so this is from our product that, you know, we send out an email rather than a PDF to allow, you know, a customer to fill out their profile online and save it. You know, the nice part is once that's saved, you know, they fill that information out. Once it's saved, it automatically updates the ERP. So everything's kept in sync. Now that all the master data is correct. And it required no work for the AR team to get that information in. 100% automated. You know, modifying the communications, as I mentioned, no attachments. In this case, you want to be able to, you know, view the invoice. There's a, there's a link in there to be able to do that and take you right online using the Magic Link Access, right? So the, and the Magic Link Access can get you to a statement, might get you to an individual invoice, um, maybe to something like, you know, hey, we need a promise to pay from you. All of those kinds of things, directing the customer and nudging the customer uh, down the payment process and the ability obviously to pay online. Promotion is an important part of adoption. You wanna promote digital adoption across all your channels. Sending out an announcement email of the things that have been harvested or the ones that are on record. We actually have an explainer video, right? That you're able to provide customers to see what's in it for them and why is this beneficial. 
creating statement inserts. Uh, so everything that goes out, you know, like a, a yellow or an orange or a red little insert, so that people see it and then they can take that and, and follow up on it. Uh, obviously, in your corporate voicemails, when people call in, just like when you call into an airline, they say, you know, for faster service, you may want to call or may go online and do X, Y, and Z. Same thing when they call the accounting department, make sure that that's in their voicemail. Obviously, making sure contact information is on their corporate website and then all your email signatures. And when this is done, it really drives adoption across all the channels. And then how do you monitor that? So the biggest thing is that being able to report, you know, are you meeting the metrics that you wanted to do? How many people used self-service this week? How many used it this month? What is the percentage? Is it growing? So keeping on top of that and being able to monitor is pretty critical. And then ultimately you will wanna get feedback. Um, feedback helps you figure out what else you might wanna do. You can segment customers or, you know, that didn't adopt and find out why not and, you know, find out what else you can do to make people's experience much better. So that is the adoption roadmap, uh, being able to go through that um, from kind of end to end. And ultimately, hopefully that's what you've seen here. Our goal today was to demystify digital transformation for accounts receivable. And I hope that's what we've been able to do because it's, it's really these three steps. Replace paper with the email communication, replace personal inboxes with a shared workspace, and replace attachments with magic links. And if you do that, you'll get the business benefit that really drives a business case around this. All of our customers see a hard ROI return, whether it's increased cash flow that gives them working capital, um, increased cash from operations by decreasing uh, you know, financial institution fees, freeing up staff time to focus on higher priority things that also unlock cash flow, and then increasing share shareholder value because this all drops right to the bottom line in terms of profit. You know, we, we invite people to start your digital transformation right now. You can visit anytimecollect.com and request a, a demo or an assessment. We're always happy to you know, give you an assessment of you know, the opportunity that's in front of you. Uh, we do have an industry leading blog. You know, feel free to you know, go on there and we've got lots of good articles and uh, background on that and some uh, great white papers. So I hope you take advantage of that. And I hope you found uh, this uh, a good session. And at this point, we'll open it up to uh, any questions that you might have and anything I might be able to share in terms of answers. Great. Thanks, Matt. So uh, yeah, with that, everyone, um, feel free to put your questions in the chat bot um, or in the q and I'm monitoring those. I did have one more poll that I went ahead and launched just in case uh, you're curious about next steps or wanted additional information. Um, go ahead and launch that. But uh, I did have one, uh, one question came in. Um, where do online payments come into play? Yeah, great question. So uh, online payments um, is a part of the self-service. So typically when I talk about sort of the automation that you want to provide um, online that makes people adopt, one of them is when they view their invoice, the ability just to pay it right there. And so you want to be able to do online payment through that means. I had another question. Um, do you integrate with any ERP systems? Yes, we integrate with over 40 ERPs today, um, and it's a growing list. Um, so if chances are, if we don't have the ERP that you're interested in, um, we are able to implement that within a month. And um, feel free, I can send a link to our integrations page if anyone's interested to, or I can put it in the chat bot. Um, we did have another question also. Do you sell direct to market or offer bank reselling programs? Uh, we do both. So if you're interested, um, please, please contact us and we'd be happy to discuss it. Okay, and looks like I did get one more. Um, can you quantify some example benefits? Yeah, so as I mentioned, the, the one example that I used was just the reduction in paper costs. But the, the more important one that CFOs have looked at is 
uh, reducing uh, day sales outstanding or accelerating cash flow. Um, several of our customers recently have reduced their uh, DSOs from you know high 80s to low 50s. So that's a pretty dramatic improvement, uh, which get, frees up a lot of working capital. So their past dues come down, um, their cash collections have uh, accelerated. So those are tend to be the things that we look at is you know sort of past due and you know being able to reduce those DSOs to accelerate the cash in. Very good. And it looks like we got one more question. Time for one more. Um, what adoption levels should someone expect? Great question. What we see is that it comes uh, in waves. So there's usually an initial wave uh, through the initial promotion that sees a, a substantial uptick. And that, that initial uptick can be somewhere between you know, 30 you know, to maybe 50, 60%. So that's where you, you see this first adoption. And then it's really kind of over time encouraging people to adopt. One of the interesting things is a lot of, uh, a lot of organizations or people need to hear something four or five times in order for it to kind of think, oh yeah, that, that would be a better way. Um, and that's what we see. That's why sometimes, you know, that initial wave will get a certain number of people, but then the ability to kind of constantly keep people thinking about it is important. Um, if you have time, Matt, there did, there was one more that came in actually. Um, yeah. It was a two-part question. So is your solution designed for B2B or B2C? And what size of supplier uh, would, you, would, you, would you use your solution in annual sales volume? So. Yeah, great question. So we, um, we primarily focus on business to business uh, as are you know, the people that buy our solution. And the size of those companies really ranges pretty dramatically. We have one company uh, that's 1.4 billion in revenue, um, and then another that is 1.4 million in revenue. So it's a, it's quite a range. Uh, we tend to focus, uh, you know, it tends to be, you know, across the board who's looking for automation and going digital, and and so we do scale up and scale down. And then we also got one more. Um, with regards to compliancy, how do you manage those documents for manufacturing and distribution? Great question. So we, um, we have a feature called profile management. And when a customer, for instance, registers with you, they will actually upload all their compliance documentation through that feature. So when they fill out their profile, they also upload um, any compliance documentation. That's then kept on file. So we keep that on file and then periodically, you know, based on kind of the timing that you'd like, go out and reconfirm that with each customer. So there's automation to sort of keep compliance in, in, in uh, you know, an up-to-date state. All right. Well, thank you. Those are great questions. Um, that looks like that was all of them. I know we went a little bit over, but um, just want to say thank you, everyone, and thanks for Matt for such a great presentation. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.